John already shared a little bit about, the, I'll share about our ministry. It's called Thrive Leadership Foundation. Um, we spent 22 years in the pastoral ministry, and then we spent 11 years taking churches like yours and people like you on short-term mission trips around the world. And uh, at, in the midst of doing that, we, uh, God put it on our hearts to start a ministry to those in ministry. And so it's called Thrive Leadership Foundation. And our desire is that people in ministry aren't just surviving, but they're thriving. And as it says, we want to see people living and leading from a renewed and empowered life in Jesus Christ. It's all about our walk with Jesus, and it's about our spouse, and it's about how we can relate to those around us. But taking care of ourselves and our relationship with Jesus is primary. And we do that through ministering uh, across the table with a cup of coffee or over lunch or breakfast or actually doing conferences for uh, couples like that on a regular basis for those in ministry. And so you can be praying for our ministry. If you want to know more about it or have a brochure or one of our newsletters, it's back there on the, back on the table over there. So feel free to pick that up after the service and you can read more about what we do with Thrive Leadership Foundation. I'd like to begin with a word of prayer, just asking God to teach us this morning, because if he doesn't teach us, it really doesn't matter what I have to say. It's really about him speaking to your heart and speaking to my heart as we look into God's word and as we talk about this whole subject of peace and how to find peace in the midst of the chaos that we live in each and every day. We've sung about that chaos this morning in one of those songs. I saw that. So let's think about that as we come to before the Lord in prayer. Would you join me in prayer? Father, it's good to know that you're never too busy for us. That you, when we come to you in prayer, you, you get down on your knee and the scripture says you, you incline your ear towards us. I envision you just like I would do with a young child, get down and turn my head and listen closely to what they have to say. And that's what you do for us, Father. And so I just thank you for your presence. I thank you for bringing us here today. I thank you that none of us are here by accident today. You have put us in this room together today for a reason, for a purpose. <coughs> and Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in our midst and what you've done already in our midst here today. Father, speak to our hearts through your word. Open our hearts up by your Holy Spirit. Allow us to be sensitive to what you want us to hear, what you want us to take from here this morning, and how you want us to live a life pleasing to you in all areas of our lives as we live our day, each and every day. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to talk to you this morning about this whole concept of peace. How do you conquer chaos and find fulfillment in your life each and every day? How do you do that? And this is going to be real practical about peace. So this is... Uh, how do we get real practical about peace? <coughs> I apologize for my tickle this morning in my throat that I can't seem to get rid of. Practical peace, conquering chaos and finding fulfillment of peace in our life. Do you know this morning, and we're going to talk about this thing called a peace index this morning. Do you know there's a number bouncing above your head this morning? It's your peace index number. All right, there's a number above your head and you may not know what that number is right now, but let me tell you what your spouse does. Or your friends know what it is. And they know what that number is above your head this morning when it comes to peace in your life. And that that number is kind of interesting, though. It goes up and down kind of like the stock market, all right? Because the circumstances of life jerk us all around sometimes and, and, and come against us and challenge us with regard to our peace. So it goes up and down a lot like the, the stock market. And... If my peace is low, the reality is it affects the peace of everybody else around me. It affects everybody else's peace. I don't have to tell you there's chaos in the world. I mean, we've lived through COVID. It seems like we're kind of semi beyond COVID in our lives now, but we're dealing with all the inflation issues now. We're dealing, still dealing with some supply chain issues. I can't always get the applesauce I like at Walmart when I go in there. So there's always supply chain issues, you know. Uh, there's Russia issues. There's Russia war, Ukraine war. There's China issues. There's Iran issues. There's unrest financially. There's unrest politically. There's unrest socially in our world around us. But maturity, and that's what God calls us to, maturity is inner peace when there is no outer peace. 
And that's what God wants for us in our lives. He wants us to have inner peace when there's no outer peace in us. He wants us to have peace in the midst of the chaos when there's no outer rest around us. John 14, 23 says it this way, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You know, I've always looked at that, per, that verse and I thought there were two different types of peace that Jesus was talking about there. But I'm, I've come to the conclusion, I don't think there's two types of peace there. I think there's one type of peace. It's the peace that he gives. He's the one who is the giver of peace. Not just peace between us and our Heavenly Father, but he brings peace into our lives each and every day. That's what he is. He is the Prince of Peace, brings peace into our lives every day. But what does it say? I always thought the world had a, its own peace that it would give us. That's what, how I read that second phrase there. I do not give to you as the world gives. But what the world gives is trouble, chaos. I don't, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. You see, fear, chaos, and trouble, that's what the world gives to us. And if we're looking for peace in the world and for the world to give us peace, it's not to be found there. The world gives us chaos. Jesus says, I've come to partner with you. John 10, 10. I've come to give you life and life to the fullest, he says. I love that verse. Jesus has come to give us life to the fullest. He says the enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. We'll talk about that later. But Jesus says, I want to partner with you, and I want to bring life to you, and I want to be on the offensive so that you can have peace in your life each and every day. 1 John 3 says that Jesus also comes to destroy the works of the destroyer. He's come to destroy chaos. He's come to destroy the works of Satan that are around us each and every day in our lives. You know what? There is no world peace, though, until there is inner peace. Now, you may have, you know, we all know about the global chaos that's going on around us. We've talked about that already. But how's the, the local chaos in your own life? You know, how, how's that chaos right around you right now? That maybe emotionally insecure coworker that you work with, maybe a boss that yells at you all the time, maybe a roommate who's not always there, maybe a psycho neighbor, maybe in-law issues, spouse issues, children issues. There's a lot of these things that bring chaos into our life. So I want our focus, I want our focus to be this this morning. Our focus is where there is no peace. Let's identify where there's no peace and then why there's no peace as we walk through some of these things this morning. But I want to get a little bit more specific than that because you know what? We can get into this general whining in our lives about peace and about what's not going what right and what's kind of off in our lives. But let's get specific about it this morning. Now, this is where you're going to need your cell phone, okay? So do you know, if open up the calculator on your cell phone. Do you know how to do that? If you don't, ask someone 20 years younger than you. Ask your children. They'll help you. Flip open that calculator. You're going to need this unless you want to do old-time math and you've got a pen and pencil and you can do it on that half sheet I gave you this morning. We're going to identify your peace index number this morning, all right? So I need us to be interactive about this this morning. And I'm not going to ask you what's on your paper. And let me just say this. Don't compare your numbers to your neighbor's numbers. They don't relate at all. This is your numbers, all right? So let's talk about peace, all right? You got the calculator out there this morning? All right. There's five different areas. You can see the five circles on your paper there this morning. We're just going to walk through those. I want you to rate this from 1 to 100. Okay, so here's your scale, 1 to 100 in the first area, and that's in your purpose in life. Why you believe you're here on this earth? Do you feel like you are carrying out what you are called to do? Do you feel like you are living out the purpose that God has for you here in this world right now and this time? Would you rate if you feel like you're really on target or where you're at with regard to your purpose? One to a hundred, all right? Can you rate yourself? Got a number? Punch it into your phone, all right? Hit plus. This isn't real hard, but I'll walk you through it. It's okay, folks. All right, so you got that number in there? All right, should not be above a hundred yet in there, all right? If it's above a hundred, you did something wrong. You hit that plus sign twice or something, I don't know. Should, should not be above a hundred. All right, the second one is people. Where are you at with the people in your life? Maybe it's your top 10 favorites on your phone. Maybe it's the family and your close friends, maybe some coworkers. Where are you at in your relationship with your people in your life with regard to your relationship with them? Write it for, rate it from 1 to 100. Punch that number in. Hit plus. All right. You with me so far? Are we tracking on this? All right. Third area is place. 
the spaces you live in. Are you supercharged about this? Do they supercharge you or not? Your living area, your home, maybe your backyard, maybe your community, your neighbors, your office space, the spaces that you live in each and every day, how would you rate those spaces from one to 100? You're really excited about those, they're supercharged about them, or man, you're really struggling with those. One to 100, punch that number in, all right? If you're above 300, there's really a problem here. We gotta get back, okay? So we're doing good so far. Next one, personal health, mind, body, spirit. How do you feel mentally, physically, spiritually? Rate your personal health from one to 100. Punch that number in, hit the plus. We're almost done, you guys are doing great. All right? The last one's your, your provisions, your earnings. Not what you want, but what you need. Do you have enough for what you do in the life that you're leading right now? Where are your provisions for you right now? Not what you want, but what you need. Where are your provisions right now? One to 100, rate that area. All right, we're almost done. Hit the equal sign, it's really important. If you're over 500, there's a problem, all right? Hit the division sign, put a five in there, and hit equals again. You should have a number somewhere between one and 100 on your screen right now, if you did the math right, all right? That's your peace index number today, right now. That's what it is. That's where you're at. Let me talk a little bit about that peace index number right now. What does that really mean? Well, one of these areas is what we call a leading indicator. When it's off, everything else is, is gone haywire. So I want you to think about which one might be your leading indicator. Maybe put a star next to it on that piece of paper or just mental note, which one's my leading indicator. It controls everything else in my life. It may be the people in your life because some of you are a real people person. Man, when that's off, everything else is skewed. Maybe your purpose, it may be finances. It could be any of these. You pick which one's your leading indicator. That's important to continue to notice as you go throughout your life each and every day because you can do the peace index. I have folks that do it every week. End of every week, beginning of every week, they go through the peace index. Where am I at? Because sometimes you just feel off. Have you ever just felt off and you don't know why? Just kind of in a funk, I call it. Yeah, yeah, you feel off, you don't know why. Pull the peace index out. This is how simple this thing is. Pull it out, walk through your five areas, and all of a sudden you're going to go, oh, that's why I'm off. The other thing is, look at the one that's the lowest this morning. Whatever one that is, let me tell you something about the lowest one. That's where the enemy is going to attack you. And that needs to be a matter of prayer. And you need to come before the Lord with that area that's the lowest and say, Father, help me to have peace, help this area to be, imp to be improved in my life. You see, that gives you a target for prayer. You can just pray about, oh, God, I'm just off. I just don't feel right. I just... I don't feel at peace, I feel anxious, I feel, uh, you know, tentative or whatever. You can have those feelings in your life, but if you don't identify it, it's hard to pray about it and ask for God's help with it. So I want you to identify, this helps you to begin to identify, where am I at in my life? One of my mentors, he's in his mid-70s, he's a, one of these guys that has been in ministry all of his life and he just really challenges me all the time, and I, you just see him, you know, almost like he's so good, you can't just believe how good he is all the time. And he's just sharp, and he's spiritually sensitive, and just, it, it's a real blessing to have him in my life, and his name is Steve. And um, I shared this at one of our conferences with our pastors and wives. I shared the Peace Index. And he came to me at the next conference because he and his wife help us lead those, and he said, Scott, he goes, I do this Peace Index every week. He said, when you shared it with us the last time, he said, I was looking at it going like, ah, I don't know about this thing. And all of a sudden I realized that he goes, my physical health was my big issue. It was really low. You don't have to be around Steve long to know he's got some physical issues. All right? He's uh, not taking the best care of his body. He's played high level tennis most of his life. He's had knee, both knees replaced. He's had a hip replaced. He hobbles around a lot. You know, and he still goes out at six in the morning and plays high level tennis. Uh, he said, I don't hit the ball as hard as I used to, but he goes, I can still get around and hobble around on the court. But he said, I didn't realize, he goes, I was just feeling down just in general in my life. 
And as I did the peace index and I realized all my other four numbers were in the 90s, but my personal health was in the 40s. And I realized I've got to celebrate what God is doing in the other areas of my life, and I need to pray about what's not happening in my physical life and not let that control everything else around me. You see, because the enemy wants to get us down. The enemy wants to, John 10.10 10 says, the enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And so that's his target for us. He wants to destroy us. He wants to get us off base. Jesus comes to bring peace. He comes to bring life. He comes to establish peace for you in the middle of that area that you're struggling right now. Now, let me tell you, what's the goal of the Peace Index? The goal of the Peace Index is simply this. The Peace Index helps you to manage your emotions so other people don't have to manage your emotions. Did you get that? The Peace Index helps you to manage your emotions so other people or so your spouse or so your parents or so your children don't have to manage your emotions for you. Because there's always going to be chaos. Jesus says, when I leave you, there's going to be trouble. But he said, I will be in you. If you look at the disciples at the book of, uh, before the book of Acts and then after the book of Acts, you have the disciples during the life of Jesus, and they were struggling all the time. They, there was fear. There was challenges. They, they, they were questioning a lot of things. <coughs> and then it says in Acts 1 that they were given power from on high. Jesus says, wait till the Holy Spirit comes upon you and receive power from on high. And he already told them he was going to be with him. He was going to be with them and put his peace within them. And so the disciples, as they begin to walk through the book of Acts, as we have it recorded for us, you see them walking in power and peace. And power and peace. Why? Because they were trusting in Jesus and the Holy Spirit was working in and through their lives. Acts 4.13 says it this way. It says the, the, the leadership, the religious leaders of that day, they had Peter and John before them. And they were trying to figure out what gave them the boldness in their lives. And as they looked at Peter and John's life, they couldn't figure it out because they said they're just ordinary, uneducated men, is what it says about them, except that they had been with Jesus. You see, there's the key. Jesus gives us peace, and Jesus gives us power, and then he wants us to walk in peace and in power. Take that step in peace and empower in our days each and every day that we live on the earth. Philippians 4, 7 says it this way, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. But what, what's that really look like? You see what I like about these five different areas that we can look at, from purpose the whole way around to people and provision and place and personal health. What I like about those five areas, it kind of describes the word that's used for peace in the Old Testament. You may have heard the, the Hebrew word shalom. And shalom isn't just peace. Shalom is this overarching well-being in our lives, in all areas of our lives. It's this well-being that God promises to us. That's what Jesus promised to give us, is this overarching well-being in all areas of our life. And I think the peace index begins to help us identify what area God ha doesn't have control in our lives yet and where we need help in the life this particular day. So when you think about peace in your life, he says, I want to guard your hearts and your minds. I want you to walk in power, and I want you to walk in peace. So how do I manage my personal peace? Right? How do we manage our personal peace? I want you to manage peace this way, and I'm going to talk about it above and below the clouds, all right? So I have the slide up there. We manage peace. We're below the clouds. Many of you have flown in an airplane, and you can be a storm at the airport where you're taken off from. It can be a snowstorm, or it can just be raining, or it can be maybe a thunderstorm coming through and lots of uh, struggle issues going on. And then you take off in that airplane, and you get above the clouds, and what happens? What's above the clouds? Come on, we're allowed to talk here this morning, right? Sun, yeah, it's bright, it's blue sky, it's shining, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. I, I remember the, my first time I flew and we got above those clouds, I'm like, oh my goodness. I just never envisioned what that was like, you know? And so often, we're living in the chaos underneath the clouds, all right? And we need to learn to manage peace, and that's what the peace index helps you. You'll walk through the five areas and say, okay, where am I off right now? Where, where is my area that I'm struggling right now with having peace in my life? And we begin to manage peace under the clouds. But then I want you to rise above the clouds and begin to master peace. 
And that's when the Prince of Peace, the Master of Peace, begins to rule and reign in our hearts and in our lives. And that's when he guards our hearts and he guards our minds in Christ Jesus as we get ourselves above the clouds. You see, he doesn't want us just to manage chaos. He wants us to live above the chaos. He wants us to be walking in this world with the peace that he gives us so that we can impact the lives of those around us with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ where we can see people get peace with God because they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So how do we do that? How do we walk in peace? I'm going to give you a peace plan. It's pretty simple. It comes out of Psalm 37. If you want to turn there in your scriptures, or it'll be on the screen for you. And I'm going to read that passage. Psalm 37, verses 3 to 6. And there's a peace plan that he gives us for every day, walking in peace in our lives. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe passage, pasture. Take delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness he will make your righteous rewards shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Three things that I'm going to give you this morning. This is your peace plan. This is how we walk in peace. It begins in the first verse. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. For someone here this morning, I don't know you this morning. I don't, I don't know this congregation. So I don't know where you stand with your relationship with Jesus this morning. But that first trusting in Jesus begins at salvation when you understand that you're in need of a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus who can forgive you of your sins and you've accepted his free gift of salvation and you've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to forgive your sins and to make you right with God. And that's where we get peace with God in our lives. And that's where it all starts. But this trusting in the Lord and doing good is a daily trusting in the Lord. It's what I need to be doing every day in my life. I need to be trusting in the Lord and walking in his ways. Trust in the Lord and do good. Scripture tells us in Ephesians 2.10, it says that we are to do the good works that God prepared in advance for us to do. God has good things that he wants us to be doing every day, good works. And the first way to begin your peace plan every day in your life is to trust in the Lord and do good. And we begin each day by trusting in the Lord and doing good. Trusting in the Lord and doing good. Having an impact on the world around us by doing good. The second thing is to delight yourself in the Lord in all areas of your life. Delight yourself in the Lord. Do you ever think about what it means to delight in the Lord? And what's your delight like? Is it small, medium, or large in the Lord right now? What's your delight in the Lord like? How do you really just enjoy the Lord in your life each and every day? So we're trusting the Lord and do good. We're delighting in the Lord. The third one comes in verse 5. It says, commit your ways to him. That's that whole idea of yielding ourselves to him. Everywhere we go and everything we do, am I surrendering to the Lord? Am I committing my ways to the Lord? Sometimes even on those detours of life. Oh, you've been there. You know, those unexpected things that you didn't have in your plan, but God somehow puts them in your path for today. Yeah, they happen to each and every one of us. Those detours in life we need to commit to the Lord. Those plans that we have we need to commit to the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Yield yourself to him. Even if it's to a bad boss, what are you doing? How are you committing your way to impact that bad boss that's out there? That challenging relationship that you have in your life right now. How are you committing your way to the Lord even in the midst of that? And then do you see what happens? If we trust in the Lord and do good, what's the promise? You will dwell in the land and live securely. That's the idea that, that he's going to bring peace into the midst of your life where you're at. If we trust in the Lord and do good. He's going to bring peace right where you are. If you delight yourself in the Lord, what does it, what's the promise that comes out of that? He says, he will give you the desires of your heart. Our desires will begin to line up with his desires. And his desires will line up with our desires. Because he's going to give us the desires of our heart. He's going to work in our lives as we delight ourselves in him. What's the third thing that happens? If we commit our ways to him, it says, he'll make your righteousness shine and he'll vindicate you like the noonday sun. He's going to work in your life. He's going to make you shine as lights in this dark world around us as we commit our ways to him, as we trust the Lord and do good, as we delight ourselves in the Lord each and every day, as we commit our ways to him, wherever he takes us, he's going to shine in and through our lives and allow our lives 
to be a shining example of reflecting Jesus into the lives of the people around us that we touch each and every day. My friend Jeremy Kubitschek, who is the, the founder or the, the creator of the Peace Index, and uh, he's given me permission to use it. So he goes, Scott, just go out there and use this because people in the church need to hear this. He said he has his mentor, his name's Doug. He was an older gentleman, lived in Washington, D.C. He would talk to Doug every once in a while, and, and uh, he called up Doug one day, and, and, and Doug said to him, Jeremy, he said, uh, what do fountains do? And Jeremy's going like, what? Doug said, what, what do fountains do? And Jeremy goes, well, they, they bubble up water, and people come to them and drink water and get refreshed, and you know, they, that, that, that's what fountains do. And uh, Doug said to him, do, Jeremy, do, do fountains move? Jeremy said, he goes, I'm on the other end of the phone shaking my head going, like, where is Doug going with this? This is really weird. Do fountains move? No, Doug, fountains don't move. They're usually on a wall or stationary out in the middle of a park or someplace like that. Fountains don't move. Fountains just are there. And people come to the fountains and, and, and they get drinks at the fountain, you know, and they get refreshed from the water. But fountains don't move, Doug. And Doug just simply said to him, Jeremy, go be a fountain that moves into the lives of people, brings them refreshment, demonstrates peace of what God can do in their life if they just come to that living water. In the book of John, chapter 7, verse 38, it says that we are to, it says that out of us, speaking of the Holy Spirit, will flow rivers of living water. That's a fountain. You know, rivers don't flow that way. Have you thought about that? It's usually small little streams come together and they form a river and then they form a bigger river and then they eventually get down to a bay and then out to the ocean. But it's multitude coming together and flowing into one. Jesus reverses it. Jesus says, out of you, each and every one of us who are followers of Jesus, out of us will flow rivers of living water into the lives of the people that he puts in our path each and every day. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your ways to him and allow him to work in and through our lives to bring that living water into people's lives each and every day. Why? Because people see the peace of God ruling and reigning in our hearts and in our lives. They truly see a picture of shalom in our lives each and every day. So how do you mess up peace? Uh, I'll do this real quick, how we mess up peace. We trust in, trust in yourself to find security. Fulfill your own desires with your bucket list. And make yourself shine by trying to be some influencer on social media. That's the easy way to, to destroy and mess up peace in your life. That's the devil's game plan. You see, he's your enemy. And the enemy, yeah, the devil's anything but full of peace. He's probably the most insecure being in the universe. And insecure people create chaos and spread it all around them. And that's what he wants to do. But we are to be secure. We are to be confident. We are to be humble. Children of the Most High God. People of the King of Kings. And we are to be walking in peace as he leads us every day. God says, can you trust me with these five areas of your life? Can you trust him with your purpose, with the people, with the places, with your personal health, with your provisions, and allow him to bring peace and wellness into those areas of our lives so that we can be people of peace, not just managing peace in the midst of chaos, but rising above it and living out peace in the midst of the chaos of the world around us each and every day. I remember years ago watching the Miss America pageant and they'd get down to the last four or five contestants. And they would ask them these questions about what did they want to do if they became Miss America? And what would they want? And inevitably, one of them or a couple of them would say, well, I, I want to work on world peace. That hasn't done a whole lot of good, has it? Hasn't really impacted the world the way I think they wanted it to impact the world. But for us as followers of Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to impact the world. You know, we can blame the world for the chaos around us. We can whine all the time about chaos and struggles and difficulties in the world around us. We, we can be good whiners. 
But God calls us to be people of peace. God calls us first to live in peace in our lives and then be that fountain to spread that peace into the lives of other people by offering to them the Prince of Peace who can bring them peace with our Heavenly Father, and that's Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3.11, I'll close with this. It says, search for peace and work to maintain it. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Peace Index will help you to manage your emotions so people around you don't have to manage your emotions. But living in the peace that God can give us, that we need to search for and we need to pursue and we need to reach for in our lives each and every day because the chaos of the world will take us off track. Let me tell you, it does. Very quickly. As you walk out this door, it can be taken and an area, the peace can be ripped away from you because the enemy's after us. But at the same time, we do not need to fear him because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world because we serve the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. We serve Jesus Christ. Pursue peace in your life. Seek to maintain it and then watch as God gives you opportunity to bring peace into the lives of people around you each and every day. No matter where you go, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Delight yourself in Him and let Him shine through you today. Let's pray.